semen retention, body gains, and spiritual military training, man. If you wanted a chosen, you better be on your game. You hear what I'm saying? Because they aim for our heads. They ain't playing around. Ever since before we was even born, they knew we was coming and they poisoned the waters to get to us. So you need some damn military training. I got videos about these tactics that they be using and how to get past these tactics. You hear what I'm saying? But there's a way that we can beat them all the time and sit back and watch the destruction come upon them. But when we read the Bible and we hear about these ways, this world has made these ways look like little sissy ways. Like when you hear turning the other cheek. A big dude would be like, man, somebody slap me, I'm going to slap him back. Jesus was weak, turn the other cheek. Look, I understand I said it too before I knew the truth. Forgiving my enemies, praying for my enemies, all of that, I was like, why? My enemies deserve exactly what they put out. I'm not praying for them, I'm not forgiving them, but I didn't know the secret. They make us read the Bible in a certain way, in like a, a pink pig type of way. You hear what I'm saying? I always talk about the boar being wild, doing what he want to do with the tough skin and the pink domesticated pig doing what the former want him to do. So the boar reads the Bible different than the pink pig reads the Bible. The pink pig reads the Bible like a slave reads the Bible. And the boar, he reads the real meaning, the spiritual meaning of the Bible. So let's talk about how to watch your enemies get destroyed every single time, 100% of the times, it never fails. The first step is you got to give it to the most high. Now, I know that sounds hard, man, because it is. Because once these people come, these demons inside of them know exactly how to trigger us. You hear what I'm saying? So that's going to be hard to just leave it in the hands of the most high. But the more you start to do that and see the results, then you will start trusting it. So that's the first step. If somebody at your work or somebody at the gym or whatever, and you see them being wicked towards you, already know that you won. And just leave it in the hands of the most high. I look at it like this. I'm a championship fighter. I'm like I'm like Floyd Mayweather in the spiritual realm. Nobody can't just come to Floyd Mayweather and say, hey, I want to fight you for the title. He'll be like, who is you? I, I, cho I choose who I choose. I choose my battles. You hear what I'm saying? Like, no. I'm giving it to the most high, man. Look. I'm, I'm not tripping. Don't get me wrong. Bet not nobody touch me or I'm going to turn into Samson. That's totally different, man. I'm talking about your everyday life, being gang stalked, the little words that they doing, the them teaming up, the isolating you, the taking the benches, the laughs, the giggles, the stares, the copying, the tithering, the all of that. Give it to the most high, man. You already won. You already the Floyd Mayweather. When you see them sinning, you should be happy because you're like, wow. They about to get served. See, I've given it to the most high so many times that I pray for my enemies. That's where the praying comes from. That's where the praying comes in. Pray for your enemies now. I tell the truth, I don't pray for my enemies to be right because the wicked is wicked from birth. That's what the Bible say. Some people, it ain't no change. So I'm not praying for them to go to Jesus or anything like that. 
What I'm praying for What I'm praying for is that they can make it through all the damn karma and the deaths and the sicknesses and the being locked up, being unhealthy. I'm praying. Okay, look, it's like this, right? If you got two big gorillas in your backyard, right? And this is a person that's messing with you. And he say, hey, man, I'm going to hop over your gate. And I'm breaking your house, man, and take everything. And he don't know you got them two gorillas. Wouldn't you pray for him? Wouldn't you be like, oh, man. Or even some German shepherds, like three big male German shepherds in your backyard. He don't even know. And you see your enemy climbing your back gate. An empath, a real empath would be like, oh, man. Some people would let him get ripped up. What I'm trying to say is when I'm praying for my enemies, I'm praying because they ass is about to fry. Just like if I seen them hopping in my backyard with my two gorillas, I know what them gorillas going to do to them. The blood of Jesus. You know how many people I didn't seen just drop dead or get AIDS or turn into crackheads or get killed by the police or get killed by their own brother? How many people did dead life? All of that, man. I see, I'm talking about people that didn't mess with me. Now, there's more people outside of that that I didn't see too, but I'm just talking about the people that didn't hop in my backyard and allow my gorillas to rip them up limb for limb in the spiritual realm. You hear me? So I give it to the most high. I also pray for him because I pity the fool. You hear what I'm saying? I really pity the fool. Now turning the other cheek is cold, man. Turning the other cheek is not just being a buster. Turning the other cheek is guaranteeing that your enemy is going to get destroyed, man. I used to think it meant just turn and just let him hit me and abuse me, then turn and let... No, that's how the pink pig read it. I slave master abuse. But when you read it spiritually, listen, God fight all of our battles. This is another reason why you, why you discipline your children. You, 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 you don't spare the rod because you spoil the child. Now, listen, the Most High fights all of our battles, man. But if we interfere with that, then this is where it stops. So if somebody offends Wormwood, then I just sit back. I absorb it. I channel that negative energy into push-ups, a poem, running, whatever I do. It's going to go away. It's going to go away. You resist the devil and it's going to go away, man. And that feeling right there ain't going to be on you all day, man. So you resist it. And as you're doing that, it's boomeranging back on that person seven times. You turn in the other cheek. Every time a person offends you, turning the other cheek don't just mean like a physical slap. It means assault. It means people stealing from you. It means uh, slandering your name, all of that. And when you say, I'm not going to defend myself. I'm not going to even participate. I'm going to just pray. I'm going to just hand it over to the most high. You're going to witness that person get destroyed. This is the power of turning the other cheek. You see, a person has a fork. And then you have the socket. And when they do something wrong to you, they put the fork right inside the socket. But when you interfere, you becomes the rubber. You hear what I'm saying? You become the rubber so the electricity can't get them. You you absorbing it. That's what I'm saying. So when you when somebody offends you, when somebody hits you, when you turn the other cheek and tell them to hit the other cheek, man, that's putting double karma on them. They're not going to get away 
with slapping you on the cheek. Remember, if anybody touch one of the most ties or anything, go against them, things like that. It's like a great millstone on their neck and they getting thrown in the, in, in the Pacific Ocean, man. Bam, you getting thrown in the Pacific, bam, in the Atlantic. And I didn't seen yous. As I walked down the street, I didn't smell the piss and the wine. And when he looked up in my eyes, I didn't seen that it was another one of my enemies. You hear what I'm saying? I didn't seen it a lot of times, man. You can't fight this spiritual stuff with no Uzi. You can't. The Bible tell us that. These things that's up in these people that's messing with you and stuff, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they do. It's things that hop in and out of people. Jesus seen the devil, Satan, hop up in Judas. And he said, Judas, go do what you do real quick. See, he's seen it. He had the sight. I see it. I'd be like, look, I remember it was a, a, a demon that used to follow me around, but he used to only hop into homeless Old homeless dudes with the big beards and the, 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 the real like homeless like troll white dude <laughs> or everything. And when I used to go around one, they used to activate. I remember one time I'm walking in Phoenix down the street and I'm walking this way and the other dude walking this way. And I go right here and he go right here as we go in and I go right here and he like, what are you doing? I'm like... And I'm like, I ain't for the move no more. So this fool came right by my face and said, you're spoiled. You spoiled, brat. You spoiled. And he looked up and he was like, why did you spoil him? And I'm like, what the hell? This is before I was fully woke and knew that this is really, really spiritual. And whenever I get by one of them, it'll activate. Like a certain type of, a certain type of homeless <sighs> it'll activate. Yeah, I didn't had spirits follow me around, hop into different types of peoples. Some spirits used to identify themselves with a certain smell. I smell it like I'll be on the train. Then I smell, I smell, and I'll be like, where your ass at? And I look around and be a homeless dude just looking at me like, and I'm like, yeah, what you want? Look, I remember I was on the train one time, right? And I had a gang of trees. And I had a gang of bread, right? <laughs> so I smelled the smell and I'm like, oh, what is fool up? And then it was it was in the it was in the body of a black homeless dude, right? And he was like that. He was just talking to himself, but he was talking loud on the train. And he said, he got two pounds right now. And I said, I got two pounds right now. And he said, yup, yup, he, he, he got, he, and he said the amount of money I had, the exact amount. Oh, man, and everything. He was talking about my insecurities and stuff. He was saying stuff like, how, how you going to be, how you going to be the man if, if you depressed and, and you insecure? And at that time, I was really depressed and insecure because another dealer was pushing up in and he knew the craft, right? So he wasn't, it was, it was this dude from Peru. We was enemies, not enemies. We, we was, we was like rivals, but being that it's not gang banging, he was from a gang, but he was more into, into the, you know, he was a witch though. We don't beef like this and we could still talk over a blunt, even though we beef and it's, it's crazy like that. Like Professor Xavier and Magneto could still play chess because we know that this physical, whatever you like, I'm not fit to go hit a witch, man. That karma ain't fit to come on me. And they know that I turn the other cheek so we could talk. We could reason about money things, about different things. So it was this dude from, from, uh, Ma Paru and they had bread too to go to the back rooms and all of that. And he had the homies and all his homies and all of that. He was bam, way more established than me. So I was stressing about that. 
I was really depressed, man. My confidence, man. Plus, I was fighting the gypsies, and it was just all bad at that time. A real depressed. And this this demon is inside of this homeless dude, just telling it all on the train. And I'm thinking, like, oh, fool, shut up. But I can't say shut up. I'm telling you about it. It's a spiritual battle, man. You got to know how to fight spiritually. They want us to fight physically. Why do you think they be killing all of these dudes on TV and stuff? The police and all that, them public executions and stuff. Because they want us to do the Rotten King stuff. They want us to go out and protest. Why do you think they put the battery behind Black Lives Matter to burn up all of the stuff, Tamika Mowry, whatever her name is, man. You hear what I'm saying? They the ones, they the ones who uh, tell the people to go out there and steal all of the stuff from Macy's and all of that type of stuff. And all of the, all of that is orchestrated by Soros and all of that. The, when you see the people stealing out the stores, them big mobs, and you go to the top of the big mobs, because the bottom of the big mob just look like me and mine. But when you go to the top of the big mob, that dude wear a little hat right there. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. But anyway, this is a spiritual battle, man. They, they, they want us to go out there and throw rocks and shoot and loot. Man, these fools got so many heat. They like create the Terminator things. Man, they write a program and turn all of the NPCs to just killing each other, man. And we'll be like, oh, like a zombie apocalypse, man. They do that. That's the type of stuff that they do on the physical because Satan, he owns the physical. But we're going up out of the physical. Like we're going like higher, higher than the third dimensional ice age. So high that Satan them and his demons is going to be like, animals to us yeah we had dominion over all of this stuff man but we fell real low now and as we vibrate and high and higher we have new weapons this is this spiritual this spiritual going into the darkness going into yourself meditating write things down visualizing turning the other cheek you hear what I'm saying? Taking it easy, breathing, semen retention, body gains, praying for your enemies, man. Man, I, I would not want this person, whole family to get hurt from him thinking he going to take me out, man. God, please put it up in this guy's mind because he don't understand the magnitude of the karma that's going to come on him for messing with me, man. I didn't seen people get full-blown AIDS, man. Stop playing, man. And they look me in the eyes years later and things, and I just feel so bad, but they can't do nothing about it. I can't do nothing about it. Once the Most High send out that damn death angel, it's going to be some firstborns that ain't going to be here no more. And there ain't nothing Moses can do about it. I ain't Moses. I'm working with you. But listen, the weaponry have advanced. There used to be the weapon, used to be the fist. Then it was a rock. Then it was a club. Then it was knives and spears. Then it was the gun and the missile. See, it always evolved. This is what District 9 was talking about. Remember, the government wanted... Those those aliens in District 9, their main reason was for them to, to, to use, figure out how to use these new weapons, these, these alien weapons that only the aliens knew how to use. Watch District 9, because District 9 talks about the chosen. You hear what I'm saying? That little stuff that they was collecting in District 9, that was melanin. District 9 came out in 2009. And when they was leaving, 
him and his son, the alien things, they said that they'll be back in three years to get all of the other, like uplift all of the other people. That was three years later would have been 2012, 2012. But yeah, the weaponry, they don't know how to use it. They don't know how to, they don't know how to make people have heart attacks and strokes. You hear what I'm saying? Shit, I'm just now learning. They don't know how to tap into it like, like a chimpanzee don't know how to make an atomic bomb. He can witness the boom, but he don't know how to create it. The same thing. We have the atomic bombs and they are the chimpanzees. Give it to the most high. Pray for your enemies, man. And always turn the other cheek. Turning the other cheek is like giving it to the most high. And when you do this, you will always win. Just make sure that you humble when you see that karma, because it will come. And make sure that you, you, you got some thick skin. Because some of these people might be your friends, man, and you see the karma and you just be crying and depressed. Suck it up and stick to reality, man. This is spiritual military training in these last days, man. Semen retention for the light. Body gains for the temple to keep that light up in. And we're going to establish, we're going to establish the kingdom of heaven on this earth. We're going to rewrite the programs, man. Peace.